You're listening to the Asotu Khan Sessions by Effective, recorded live in Philly. All right, we're sitting here at the Asotu Khan Sessions with my man Andrew and Jeff from AET Automotive. Of course, this is powered by Effective. We're here at Asotu Khan 2022. Uh, the inaugural inaugural one is that how you say it? Uh, um, and obviously there's been a lot of conversations something I love that they're doing is they're really encouraging conversations to happen in automotive um, we've got sales and leadership you know rooms here we've got tech and marketing rooms which uh, to my observation have been pretty full yep definitely the uh, Martech room for sure sorry yeah, sales and culture, too. We kind of divided and conquered to see uh, what other people were doing. Uh, this conference seemed to be a little more unique on paper when we uh, first signed up than actually being feet here on the ground, hearing the collaboration from you know, the dealer side to the vendor side and real conversations that were happening. Uh, well, it's funny. You know, we, we, we had a marketing budget that we blew through six months ago, and so... You know, we were, we were looking at going to driving sales and, you know, we we're going to scrounge together some marketing dollars and we we're like, ah, you know what? Let's, let's just not do those. Like, right. we need a breath of fresh air. So, like, this has really been that breath of fresh air that I think this industry needed and then us as vendors needed because I, I got a, a different sense at this event. Like, you know, the, the conversations that were happening were a lot different. They, they weren't scripted. They were right off the cuff. Like, I right. just got out of a panel with Bob Lanham and, 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 and Ryan over at uh, TikTok. And last night we were joking, like, what, you know, what are we going to talk about? But we figured it out. And it was a great conversation. But I think it was real and authentic. And I think that's what Kyle and Paul were going for in, in, in creating this event and, um, you know, bringing life back into uh, conferences. So as you've participated in some of the panels, as you've, you know, obviously you've got your marketing technology company. What are some of the, uh, I guess, standout conversations that you've participated in or just some of the sentiments that you're hearing as it pertains to the world that you're playing in? I, I think what's happening is everyone's looking for what that balance is between tech and sales and branding and mm. how to measure that, how to uh, measure the effects of that and what is defined success in that. So what's been interesting for us is we play in the tech kind of creative uh, enablement for the dealerships uh, role, but hearing from the sales guys, um, what they're hearing at the stores, what the trends are, how they're branding themselves, how the stores are branding, how they're reorganizing the stores. Uh, Patrick Abid down at Beaver Toyota just got a wine and beer license for opening up a at his dealership. I was, wow. I, I that's, don't know what the insurance brilliant. premium on that, but. I wonder how many more cars are going to sell because they're uh, selling wine and beer there too. Yeah, hopefully with full warranty just in case somebody drives off yeah, the right. lot with uh, a little bit of a fender bender. <laughs> exactly. But uh, th this conference has been good because the audience has been truly collaborative and bridging that gap between the guys and girls selling the cars on the lot and the people getting the intention, uh, attention to bring those people into the store. Love it. So you just mentioned your you're kind of focused on tech enablement. Tell me, what, what does that mean? So when we started this company, you know, we really wanted to empower the dealers, right? You know, I, I remember at the last agency that we were at, a traditional agency, I think it was like Crown Automotive Group and Joe Lamphere was, you know, just telling us how to do our job, right? And, and we were basically, you know, just going back and barking out orders. We wanted to create a company that, you know, really put the power in the hands of the dealer. And it had to start around creative. It's, you know, there's a lot of great companies in this, in this space. There's data companies, CRMs, like, yeah, I mean, the, everybody, right? But nobody had ever solved for creative. And everybody is, there's a lot of folks that are scared of creative because, you know, the dealers give all this, these great, or the uh, OEMs give these great assets, but nobody knows what to do with them to make them their own. And so we wanted to create a tool that you could take of creative and build upon it and you know throw some branding on there throw some text layers and just make it come to life and put it in the hands of the folks at the dealers because they're smart capable people there that can do it and you don't have to you know buy an expensive agency to do all the work so right democratizing creative exactly yeah and then and then once we built the creative it's like then we build on the APIs to deploy that creative and make those uh, the folks at the dealerships social media marketing magicians. Mm. Um, you know, bring in a lot of this the, the the top ad strategies built directly into our platform, and 
it's uh, it's proven. You know, when we started this company, I would have said 10% of the dealership market would use our tool. Then COVID happened and accelerated the use of use case of our product. And now I'd say there's probably like what a 20% addressable market these days. Wow. Yeah. Over the course of two and a half years, three years. So it's, wow. It's crazy. Let's talk about. Um, so we're we're solving for the creative piece. What are some trends that you're seeing work well? Uh, as far as creative for dealerships, like, uh, and and how are they using your tool, perhaps in a creative way, to to market their dealership? So I'm gonna I'm gonna pick one up on the inventory side, and then you take the next one on branding because I know that you like that side. You know, we've uh, we have a we have a tool called Inventory Studio, and it's basically an easy button for dealers to push their inventory ads, but. In the past, it's always just been meta, the meta environment that you can push it in. But we're seeing dealers now, since we've built on TikTok's platform and Snapchat's platform, they're doing a mixed media model of like pushing inventory and different types of inventory to different uh, segments. So like, you know, think of uh, TikTok. What's your demographic, right? Uh, right? 24 to 30, you know, or the younger gen- generations. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> but they're, pu- you know, you're, you're pushing entry level vehicles on there. Right. And then on, you know, um, on uh, Facebook, you know, you're doing a lot of, you know, just a little bit of uh, uh, all the vehicles, all your sure. used vehicles. It's, it's been fun to watch how dealers are pushing ads and utilizing our tool creatively and in the right way because they know that, you know, there's a younger buying demographic graphic on TikTok and uh, you, you got a kind of a, a wide range of folks on the meta platform and, and same with Snapchat, you know, it's a very younger buyer. Um, so it's, it, it's been fun to watch how dealers are actually taking our tools, layering in their creative, layering in their vehicles and then launching them, you know, by themselves and they know, they know how to do it. So I love that. Yeah. Uh, we've also noticed uh, a big drop off in offer incentives or oh, uh, totally. offer nobody's ads. got any inventory. So right how they're using our tool, which I found is interesting, is uh, going for trade-ins or buyback offers, going to their community because there's new competition. There's Carvana, Vroom, and then there's other bigger players who are in your backyard who are not actually physically there uh, competing, against, or competing against you for that inventory. So uh, direct f- from consumer buyback offers, also t- uh, recruiting for sales, there's a huge shortage in quality technicians in the industry, so people that are giving out bonuses, um, and also branding to bring people in for recruiting. Like, this is what it's like to, to work at our dealership. Here's a little behind the scenes. Um, and our tool gives them the flexibility to upload backgrounds, photos, add some animation to it, and really show how differentiate themselves within the market. Love it. I mean, it's 2002 at, or 2022 at time of recording this. Where, where do you see things going in the next three to five? Man, you would have asked me that two years ago. I would have had a totally different answer right. for you, right? Um, I want to see the inventory turn around first before I can, you know, really assess that, right? But, you know, what, what I'm hoping to see on, on our side especially is that, like, are becoming the, the, the dealer principles are, are younger and younger every year. They're you know families passing it down to you know the, the sons or daughters that are now running it. This isn't and, your grandfather's dealership anymore. <laughs> exactly, right. and, yeah. and everybody's like, and they're they're owning a lot more of their their media buys, and and they're getting more involved with you know the brand of the company instead of letting somebody else do it. So I want to see that continue to happen. Like I said earlier, you know when we started our company, we said you know ten percent of that market is is that self-serve dealer now it's 20 i'm hoping in you know two three years from now that's looking more like 30 to 40 percent and then i feel like you know that's where when dealers are going to start you know changing a little bit so Mm. i also think the customer expectations if you look at other verticals in retail the transparency and the, the influencers on social media and what the effect of transparency and how that creates a trusted brand Dealerships are gonna or starting to get that message and being more transparent, organic content behind the scenes. What's the service guy doing? And people want to do business with who they like and trust. Right. So if if they can relate, if they can like you, there's your edge over the competition who's selling the same cars, the same pre-order program. If they don't have yours, what? Why am I going to do business with? Toyota dealership over here versus across town. It's not on, based on price anymore. What's your differentiator? And I think the transparency 
powered by social medias and yeah, really social media is going to be able to show that uh, to carry brands forward in this new generation of uh, marketing. I want to really emphasize the fact that, you know, over the course of this event, we've had several conversations, uh, especially on the marketing side, and they keep coming back to this pivot point, which is not price, not even product, you, the dealership, you, the business owner, you, the people working in the dealership as the differentiator. And I want to emphasize that because it's like, please, dear Lord, can we just wrap our heads around this as an industry that it's you that are the difference? Yep. Right? When you're selling, like Best Buy sells MacBooks, Apple sells MacBooks, Staples sells MacBooks. What's the difference in all of those? The experience. The experience. Right? You know, like I know the several times that I've tried to purchase a MacBook from Staples that they keep screwing up the order. I have no idea how, but they do. So where do I go? Back to the yeah, Apple yep. store. Back to the Apple store because the experience is there. The yep. environment is there. All of the things that I want and expect to help me trust that purchase right there are all right there and so i wanted to really underscore that because here here we are again you know adding your voice now to to uh you know several of the conversations that we have where it's like brand matters yep. you matter figure your message out and stop talking so dang much about the thing that my like nine-year-old knows that you do right like if we went to my nine-year-old and said hey are you what 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 a car dealers do? she'd be like dad I thought we agreed never to ask dumb questions. <laughs> like, yeah, I, I, I think we agreed. You're never going to ask me dumb questions. They sell cars, obviously. What what don't we know? What makes you unique? What what makes you what makes you stand out? Who's your audience that you're trying to reach out to and draw in? Yep. Mm -hmm. Well, and I love the, the the motto on one of the shirts or the <clears throat> the saying. It's love love people more than cars. Right. And I think that message has come through at this conference. And and, and the, the dealerships that are going to win in the long run are going to have have to adopt that motto, not just a numbers game. How much metal can we move? How great can I brand myself? How great can I treat my salespeople? How, what is that experience that I'm going to create in my dealership that's going to make me the Apple store versus, you know, the staples where they screw everything up? Yeah. And, and reputation within the community. I mean, that's your, your public brand I mean, right. that used to be called reputation. Mm -hmm. So if you look at the history of auto, I mean, there, there's how many dealerships in every small town, every corner for generations. This is a cornerstone of America and communities. But how are you giving back to your community right. Right. Uh, as an auto dealership? I've seen awesome stuff as um i forgot who was doing it but the the hunger cup to donate also i didn't even hear that <laughs> yeah hmm. uh, uh devoe down in naples has sponsors the football field oh, cool. down there yep. yep little things like that to give back and you know part of your community yep. yeah that's very cool well i tell you what boys i love this conversation uh what you guys are doing is really cool uh again andrew jeff thanks so much for joining us on a soducon sessions powered by effective here at a soducon 2022 thanks a lot yeah. Thank you for listening to this Asotucon session by Effective. If you want more content like this, you can check out our other podcasts. We have a daily show called The Automotive Troublemaker, Monday through Friday, here on podcasts, also live streamed on YouTube and LinkedIn and Facebook. We also have a long form podcast called Auto Collabs. Auto Collabs. And if you just want to go a little deeper into this community, you should sign up for our regular email. We put our heart and soul into it. You can get it for free by going to asotu.com. We'll see you next time.